Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. So this is the Apple TV 4K, the fifth generation now of Apple TVs, but is it still worth it in 2021? I mean, with so many TVs having pretty much all of the streaming apps that we need, is there any requirement for this box at all? Well, I'm going to show you what this little box has to offer, some of the obvious things like watching movies on Netflix and Amazon Prime, but there are some other features that you might not be aware of, including screen mirroring from your device, gaming on the Apple Arcade, and even using AirPods to watch a movie. So inside the box, we've got the remote control. Now this is pretty small. It's got an inbuilt mic and a touchpad on the top, but I'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a second. You've got the Apple TV box itself. Now this is quite heavy for such a small box. It weighs about 425 grams. Then there's the power cable. You've got the setup instructions and we've got a lightning to USB cable. And that's what we'll use for charging the remote. Now you'll notice there's no HDMI cable provided, which is kind of surprising and not surprising at the same time. So you'll need to buy one of those separately. And this is the Apple TV, the box itself. So it looks nice, it's pretty plain, simple looking, but I like it. It'll easily fit into any living room or desk setup. So it's got a matte black top with the Apple logo on, and it's got glossy sides, and then there are three ports at the back. So you've got the power port with an inbuilt power supply. It's got an HDMI port, and you've got the Ethernet port as well. But you can also use it over Wi-Fi. Now it's pretty small at only 1.4 inches tall, and a width and depth of 3.9 inches. But inside this tiny box, this is what we're getting. Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus 7.1, a 4K resolution as up to 60 frames per second, Dolby Vision and HDR10. So out of the box, it covers kind of everything that you need or you would expect it to. At least that's what the other streaming apps support. So taking a look at the remote itself. Now, I really like this. It's tiny and again, it's pretty simple and plain looking, but it does everything that I need it to do. So we've got this two-tone design. The top half is a matte finish, and this is also your touchpad. So you can use this area to swipe and click on apps and options. Now this has got the menu button, which also acts as the back button if you're in an app. Now it looks different to the other buttons as well. And that's because it's got a white ring around it, but it doesn't just look different, it feels different. So it's actually slightly raised. So if you're using it at night where the lights are off, you'll be able to feel which button you're actually hovering over. Then there's the home button and that returns you to the home screen the siri button to speak any commands and then you've got the play and pause button as well as the volume controls and the little hole at the top well that is your mic and you'll use that for siri now it's also a bluetooth remote and an ir transmitter so you can actually use it to control other devices now i'm using this single remote to turn my tv on and off as well as control my avr so the volume on my amp so everything from this one remote on top of that, if you don't want to use this remote, that's absolutely fine. You can actually use your iPhone, your iPad, or even your Apple Watch to control Apple TV. Just install the app, connect to it, and now you can control it. Now, this is the easiest way to type if you need to sign in or you need to enter your password into an app. But yeah, this little remote is really, really nice. I like it. Now, I'll show you how it works a little bit later on movies and gaming. So the setup process for this only takes a matter of minutes. So I can probably show you this in about 30 seconds. It's really, really easy. Now the box itself can be controlled by Bluetooth and IR. It doesn't need a line of sight. Now that's useful for me because it means I can actually hide it away in my cupboard. So the first thing you need to do is plug the power cable in, plug the HDMI cable in and the Ethernet cable, and then we we'll start the setup. Then using the remote, we just select the languages and locations and all the usual kind of privacy and Siri prompts that you'd usually get. Then you can either set it up manually or you can actually do it automatically. So if you've got an Apple account already and you've got an Apple device, just place that nearby and it will automatically set it up. So I just placed my iPad here and within a couple of minutes, it was up and running. Right, so this is the interface. This is what the Apple TV 4K home screen looks like. So the entire screen is just like an iPad or an iPhone on a massive scale. For me, this is clean. And I mean, the tiles are, they are pretty big, but it's nice and easy to navigate. So the top bar is like a springboard. This is where you'll have your, maybe your most used or your frequently used apps. Now you can actually decide which apps you want to show here. Using the remote control, you can click and hold on an icon and then it will start to wiggle. And then you just move it around just like you would with an iPhone. So for me, I've got my most used apps across the top, which are my streaming apps. Now, as you add more and more apps, you might find that actually having dozens and dozens of apps gets a little bit difficult to sort through. So you can actually use folders. So just press and hold on an app then press the play and pause button, and then you can create a new folder. So I've actually created one just for my games. So from here, every new game that I download, I can just add it to this folder. So you could do the same with apps that you don't really want to be displayed on the home screen, and you can kind of hide them away. And if you've got any apps that you want to delete, then you just press and hold, tap the play pause button, and then hit delete, kind of similar to the way that an iPhone or an iPad works. Now, when tapping the home button on the remote, it will return you to the dashboard. 
But if you double tap that home button, it kind of goes into like a task view. And from here, you can actually see all of the apps you've got available, what you've got running, and then you just swipe up to close them. Now, if you press and hold the home button, it will actually bring up this sidebar. And this is where you can see who is signed in, the date, the time, and access some of your home settings. But this is also where you can turn everything off. So I have mine set up to control the TV and my AVR and speaker setup. So by pressing the sleep button, it turns everything off together. So I think overall, the look and the feel of the user interface is really nice. I mean, if you like using an iPhone or a MacBook, for example, then you're kind of probably used to this look already. Oh, and there's also a day and a night mode. So I have mine set to automatic, and that means that during the day, the background on the home screen is white, and at night, it is dark. Now, the apps are still pretty bright, so it's not fully dark, but it also helps a little bit. So if you finish watching a movie at night and you've got all the lights off, at least you've got less chance of burning your eyes when you return to the home screen. So downloading apps is nice and easy. Just visit the app store and either using the search function, the categories or browser, and you can just download any apps that you want. Now, just like with a normal app store, you can actually view screenshots of the app, the description, ratings, and even the size of the app if you're worried about that. Now, if you're downloading games, it even tells you whether you can use the Apple remote or if you need to use a game controller instead. Now, I'm using the DualShock 4 controller with the Apple TV and it works perfectly fine. I'll show more of that later. But there are loads and loads of apps on here, as well as music, movies, and TV shows from iTunes. There's Apple TV+, Netflix, Now TV, Sky Sports, YouTube, Amazon Prime, and loads more. So the Apple TV also has multi-user support. Now, it basically means that when you or someone else in your household signs into the Apple TV using their Apple ID, they get a kind of tailored experience. So any upcoming or recommended TV shows, it kind of works similar to the way that Netflix works. But that's not just shows and movies that it works with. It also works with gaming and game saves as well. So as well as the available TV and streaming apps that I've made the most of, the Apple TV can also be used for gaming, something that most smart TVs cannot compete with. Now, I'm not talking about Call of Duty or Cyberpunk, I'm talking about mobile gaming. Now, you can use the remote that the actual Apple TV comes with, you can use that to game on, and that's fine for the easy games, but you're not really going to be using it for all games. In fact, some games will only allow you to use a controller. Now, fortunately, Apple TV does support loads of controllers, including the DualShock 4 and the Xbox One controller. So, I'm using the DualShock 4. Now, all you need to do is turn it on, press and hold the share button and the power button at the same time, select it, and from now on, any games that I wish to play with, I can use this controller instead. Now, there are loads of games available in the App Store. Most are similar to what you've seen on an iPhone and on an iPad, but there's also Apple Arcade. Now, I recently signed up to Apple Arcade, which is a monthly subscription, but if you look around, you can get about three months for free. Now, Apple Arcade works the same across Apple TV, iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Also, as it's part of the Apple ecosystem, it means you could be playing a game on your iPhone, on your iPad, and then you can actually carry on on the TV from where you left off. Now, the reason I picked up Apple Arcade is because it's a monthly subscription, but it comes with over 100 games. I think it's about 180 games. But the advantage is there are no ads and there are no in-game purchases. So some of the games that I've tested out have been things like Sonic and Cut the Rope and that new NBA 2K21 game. This is the arcade edition. Now, visually, it looks okay. But I mean, it's not as good as a, obviously a PlayStation or an Xbox game. You want to be comparing it to a mobile game. Hopefully over the coming months or even years, we'll see more and more app developers getting on board and making games for the Apple Arcade. I think this could be a really good future for this. Okay, so on to movies and TV shows. So I watch a lot of movies on apps including Netflix, Apple TV+, Disney+, and Amazon Prime. Now, they all work and they play as you would expect. I mean, the apps look sharp, they load fast, and the content plays really, really well. Now, if you don't have a TV that has these apps installed, well, it's kind of a no-brainer to go for the Apple TV 4K, as it's absolutely brilliant. But the quality of everything that I've watched on here is awesome. I mean, the TV that I'm using is quite nice anyway, but I'm honestly convinced that the quality through Apple TV is actually better than the native apps on the TV that I'm using. Now, I might need to do a side-by-side -side test just to kind of confirm that, but if you've got an Apple TV, do you know if this is true, or am I actually just imagining this? Now, as the Apple TV supports 4K, it also means you can watch YouTube in 4K. Now, like my video now, this is in 4K. Now, as you know, I shoot all of my videos on this channel with an iPhone in 4K, so make sure you watch it in 4K if you can. Now, one other thing as well, if you do watch movies, make sure you set in the settings to an option called Match Frame Rate. Otherwise, there's a chance that the content you watch will be quite juddery and it looks pretty bad. 
So this next thing I want to talk about I think is absolutely awesome. So if you're watching a movie or a TV show late at night and you want to turn the volume up but you can't because it's too late and you've got children or you've got neighbors or if you've got a partner in bed, well, you can now use your headphones. So you can actually connect up to two sets of AirPods to the Apple TV and literally watch a movie full blast with just your headphones on and your room will be absolutely silent. Now, setting them up is easy. You just turn them on, choose them from the list of Bluetooth devices in the settings. Now, once paired, you can actually just start listening. Now, what's awesome about this as well, just like you can with an iPhone if you're using AirPods, is when you actually take them off your head, it will pause the movie. And then when you put them back on, it will resume. I think this is absolutely awesome. Now, there's also the option to do a picture-in-picture -picture setting. Now, from my testing so far, this doesn't work on all apps. For example, I could not get this to work in Netflix, but it did work on the Apple TV Plus app. Basically, when you're watching something, you can then actually have another window open at the same time. So here, for example, I've got a movie playing, and now that will show at the bottom right of the screen. Then you can go and open another app up, so a movie or a game, for example, and you can have them both playing at the same time. You can also move it around the screen if the bottom right isn't suitable. Now, I'm using this as a movie at the moment, for an example, but I would probably use it for sports. That's probably the most likely option that you would use it for. Now, there's also an inbuilt screensaver on Apple TV, which in itself actually looks pretty cool. But it also means if you've left it on a window or on your home screen for too long, it will kick in. Now, this is perfect if you're worried about burning or image retention on your TV. So some TVs already support this, and that's AirPlay and screen mirroring. And what that means is you can actually AirPlay content straight from your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac straight to the Apple TV. Things like photos and videos, or even websites that you're currently accessing. Now here, for example, I'm actually editing a photo on my iPad in Lightroom, and I can actually mirror that straight to the TV. But again, most TVs do support this already, but it's still a nice feature to have. Now, there are two storage options available. You've got the 32 gigabyte at £179 or $179, and you get the 64 gigabyte option at £199 or $199. Now, I've got the 64 gigabyte option here, but honestly, there's no difference between the two other than the storage. Oh, and obviously the £20 and $20 price tag. But I've actually added about 15 apps to this and about seven games, and I've used less than eight gig. So there really is no need to go for the 64 gig option. So with all of that, all of the features that we've covered, how does the Apple TV 4K Gen 5 compare to smart TVs today? Can it really compete? Well, I've got two LG TVs in the house, both featuring AirPlay, screen mirroring, along with all of the apps that you'd normally use like Netflix and all of the other TV streaming apps. But what you don't get with the TV is you don't get TV OS, that's the operating system for Apple TV. You don't get use of the Apple App Store and you don't get use of Apple Arcade. So that's quite a big difference. But the big question is, is it worth it? Would I actually recommend this? Well, if you're only looking for things like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other streaming apps that you've already got on your TV, I'm not sure it's worth it. Save that £180 or $180 and put that towards your subscription costs instead. But if you're wanting to make the most of things like Apple Arcade, the multi-account support, or being able to access different apps that you just cannot get on your TV, or use AirPods to watch movies and TV shows, then I would definitely go for Apple TV. Now, obviously, it's £180, so it's quite expensive. I think it's probably worth about £99 or $99. That's the price point I think it's worth. So there have been rumours of a new 2021 Apple TV coming out for some time. I mean, there's a very good chance that at the time of uploading this video, it's just been announced. But with that in mind, what would I actually want from a new Apple TV? I think I would like a 120 frames per second support as well as a faster chip. Now, both of these hand in hand will help improve the game offerings available for Apple Arcade in the future. I also think the remote could be changed. I mean, I like the look of the existing one. It looks clean. But if they added, say, dedicated buttons for streaming services like Netflix and so on, that could definitely be useful. Now, what do you think? Do you think the current Apple TV is good enough? Do you think it needs something? Is it lacking something? Or are there some features I've covered today that you weren't aware of that you think is actually pretty decent? Well, you've just made it to the end of this video, so thank you for watching. If you drop an Apple TV 2021 in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you're still here. Now, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next video. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.